sing to Jesus, peace of scepter, he's the throne. Alleluia, he's the triumph, he's the victory alone. After songs of peace through Zion, thunder like a mighty flood, Jesus out of every nation hath redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left in sorrow now. Alleluia, he is near us, faith believes, not questions how. Though the cloud from sight received him, when the forty days were o'er, shall us forget his promise? With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. Well, that's what I do to our children in the primary school. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. It was not on the book. But maybe the Spirit led us to say the good morning to each other. Good morning and warm welcome to you all um, to St. George's Church. Today, well, actually, today is not the Ascension Day. The Ascension Day is on Thursday, but we transferred that Ascension Day to today. So we are going to spend some time together 
in learning the message about the ascension of our Lord. So on your uh, weekly pew sheet, it says the, the ascension of the Lord, and, and that is the reason. Welcome to you all. Um, if you are new to us, visiting to us, particularly warm welcome, please just stay um, at the end of the service for a refreshment. And also we extend, always, as usual, our warm welcome to all those who are following us um, online as well. Before we go any further, let us spend some time together and prepare ourselves spiritually and physically for the worship. We say the collect for purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into heavens, so we, in heart and mind, may also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, please be seated for the scripture readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father, 
This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. And if you see the front page of your weekly pusit, there is a psalm response, which is, The Lord is king and had girded himself with strength. The Lord is king and had girded himself with strength. The Lord is king, he has put on splendid appeal. The Lord has put on his apparel, the girded himself with strength. He has made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. The Lord is king and has girded himself with strength. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. The Lord is king and had girded himself with strength. Mightier than the sound of many waters. Mightier than the breakers of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure. And holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forever. The Lord is king and had girded himself with strength. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority, and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Now, dear my friends, if you can't, would you please stand for the gospel? Uh, uh, uh. 
Says the Lord, I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And then they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, please be seated. Do I look okay? Same, you know, good and, you know. (laughs) Do I sound okay? I don't sound like this, right? Okay, that's good. Um, Just a quick update about what happened for those who might have a bit of, you know, curiosity. I went back to, um, you know, South Korea, visited Korea um, for about a week, ten days, eight days, well, in counting. Um, and I had a, um, the, um, and a dental you know, um, you know, operations. I thought, well, actually, I had no idea about what may happen. So I thought, okay, I'll go and see my dentist and then listen to him, and I will follow his lead, his instructions, because he's a professional. He's, he knows what to do. I have no idea. I don't know. So I went there. I had an appointment to see him at the 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We had a conversation, okay, and he said, so um, this is my plan, are you happy to accept it, and uh, do you happy for me to take the operations? So I said, yes, when should I come back? And he said, well, um, can you come back at four o'clock? So from two o'clock, well, my father was driving a car for me, so that was good, well, it was a good idea. And then at four o'clock, I went back to the dentist, and then, you know, the local anesthetics, hold the procedure, had begun, and that was at four o'clock in the afternoon. By the time when I walked out of the dentist, that was eight o'clock in the evening. It was not four hours only for me, but, you know, I think that was more than three hours, roughly three hours, you know, um, 
you know, the long operations, one here, one in there. So my face was like a Michelin man. I wanted to, um, in an informed, you know, um, the church wardens, um, you know, and some friends, um, to tell them, you know, I'm okay. One of them sent me a reply on, on the, uh, the message saying, have you been to boxing? <laughs> my face was like a, do you know the Michelin man? The Michelin man's, yes, yeah, so like a Michelin man's face. Even my old mother could not recognize me. <laughs> she was so surprised. And then my mother-in-law, can you say something? Yeah, that was me. But I am so happy and glad to be back here in one piece. And then that's why I asked you a question, whether I look okay or the sound okay. I still have a bit of you know, the pain there, so I had to take um, um, you know, a painkiller, but thank God, whole procedure went well. And then according to my dentist, my healing process, I'm doing extremely well. Thank God for that. So here I am, and then with all of you, to celebrate the uh, Ascension Day. Well, before I say anything about the Ascension, the physical thing, um, I'll give you the number. 40. Now, what do you have? Many of you will actually have the 40, the image of 40, 40 days of wilderness. Yeah, many of you will say that, 40 days. And then also the Moses, we know the story of Moses. The people of Israel spent 40 years. And then previously, even before that, in so many places in, in the Bible, when, when I say the 40, you will, will be able to actually use your knowledge and then you will think about, automatically will be reminded of some events. Not only one, but also so many. Now, if we look back what we have done as a part of our preparation for the Easter, especially during the season of Lent, and we heard the story of the people of Israel, especially during the Holy Week, um, as a part of our Easter preparation, Holy Week Vigil, Holy Saturday, Easter Vigil, we heard the story of people of Israel, their journey as a whole nation. And then this number 40 kicks in several times. And then whenever we hear the 40, there is a message. Sometimes the 40 means it's a destruction. It's a punishment. It's a kind of purification. They're all different meanings are coming to us with this number 40. And now Jesus spent again 40 days after his resurrection, after the Easter, he spent 40 days with his disciples. But this time, he didn't actually, seems like he was giving a special message or special mission um, with them. It was a very quiet day quiet period and then at the end of his 40 days now he's telling his, he, he said this to his disciples a very strange kind of riddle you know what if you carefully read the holy scripture if you try to unpack the message of god you know that everything must happen in order the messiah must suffer must die and in three days, he must be somewhere. And the third day, he came back. And even now, Jesus said, I am about to go somewhere. But I'm telling you now, soon you will receive the gift. Strange. Jesus could simply, okay, well, I can do this. I am. I'm God. So I can do this. Bang. But Jesus didn't do that. He took his time, 40 days. He allowed his disciples to be able to communicate with him. Because we know what happened. Before the crucifixion, Jesus' disciples, they all denied. They all deserted. Like a Peter, he denied three times. So even after the resurrection, we can easily assume that Jesus' disciples must not ready to engage with him fully, emotionally, physically, mentally. Therefore, Jesus stayed with them for 40 days, in and out, in and out, giving them time to observe what's actually happening. 
And then by the time when Jesus' disciples realized that, well, actually, what he said was right. Yeah, must, Messiah must have died and suffered and blah, blah, blah. And this is what's happening now. Yes, but what next? And then that was the moment Jesus promised a special gift from heaven. And he said this, wait for the gift and you are going to be my witnesses. Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, you know, that's where everything began. And the Samaria. And then when we say the Samaria, that is a, that is a meaning. It's outside of the world, the Gentiles, and to the end of the world. Do we can see that, the progress. And then that is the moment, Jesus said, wait for this gift. So, this is a strange period of waiting. Well, think about it. Today we celebrate, as I said, um, you know, Ascension today, but actually the Ascension day is on Thursday. So from Thursday until the following Sunday, when we celebrate Pentecost, at 10 days. It was a quiet and a very strange, silenced time, a special period for his disciples. And now as a Christian who live in the 21st century, we know how important it is for us to learn from this silenced, quiet, awkward period of 10 days after the ascension. Both archbishops, archbishops of Canterbury and under York, they also recognize this importance of these 10 days and they said they are calling us, all the Christian people, including us, to join in this special movement that is called the Thy Kingdom Come. Have you heard about that? Yep, yeah, Thy Kingdom Come. That is a prayer movement. Why? Because that's what Jesus' disciples did. Again, dear my brothers and sisters, do not assume, do not assume that Jesus' disciples would be like Param, like holy disciples straight away they had to go through everything repentance and then forgiveness must be proclaimed that's what our lord said and that is what happened to the disciples they had to go through everything they had to experience ups and downs they had to deny the lord and then the lord had to forgive them they had to understand that forgiveness they had to wait 40 days. They had to receive the Holy Spirit. They had to experience that transforming world, you know, transforming experience without going through every single step. Jesus' disciples could not be the one at whom we know. So dear my friends, as we, you and I, we live in 21st century. So this year, let us try not to rush into the things. Everything takes time. Every single day, we are called to pray, not rush into the next thing. Holiness, holiness, you and I, we know this very clearly. Holiness, we cannot achieve in a day. It takes time. Every single day, every morning that we offer our prayers, we're going closer to the Lord. Every time when we feel, okay, this is guilty, whenever we ask the Lord to forgive our sin, and whenever we knew that our sinful nature is accepted by God, that is the moment when we're going towards His presence. So while we are waiting together, and that's why I think being a part of this Christian community is so important. As we are waiting for the gift of God together, which we will celebrate on the next Sunday, we are called to offer special prayer for our Lord's kingdom. What we are called to do is very simple, dear my friends. Pray for his kingdom. And then again, we don't pray we are not encouraged to pray, Oh, thy kingdom come, pam, we are in heaven. No. The way we need to pray for his kingdom is this. We are called to pray for those who don't know 
our Lord yet. Think about your friends, family, colleagues around you, not only in the church, outside of the church community, your neighbors. Try to identify those who don't know Jesus yet. We're encouraged to pick five and then pray for them. Remember them in your prayer. You don't need to go and then knocking on, knocking on their doors and then tell them, I am actually praying for you. You don't need to do that because the Lord knows. So have them in your heart and in your brain and then at some point offer some prayers for them so that they also know the same truth and the message of salvation. That is what you and I, we are called to do, dear my friends. So happy Ascension. It's a great day. It's a glorious day. It's a day when our Lord will allow us to have another great expectations. And then what the Lord promised to us today is a, such a wonderful and powerful gift that will change us, our nature. And that is what we're going to celebrate next week. May God bless each and every one of us in our journey together. Amen. And now, dear my friends, it is a time for us to say the Nisan Creed. The Creed is our statement of our faith. So if you can, would you please stand now? And we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, he became incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, dear my friends, please be seated as we offer the prayers of intercessions. Heavenly Father, help us to understand the meaning of ascension and to accept it in all its wonders along with the glorious parts of your life on earth. May our vision of it become fuller and sharper every day so that we may share the blessings of your first disciples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, help us to accept your going from the world and to understand it not as a deprivation, but as a pathway to power unlimited by time and space. Help us to focus our eyes to look for your coming, not in flesh that we see and touch, but by your dwelling in our places of worship 
and by your spirit in our minds, hearts, and souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Pope Francis, Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell, Bishop of London, Sarah, Bishop of Edmonton, Rob, for our own clergy, Father Termin, all clergy in Edmonton area, and all your church in the service of Christ, that they will be guided in their ministry by the influence of the Holy Spirit. We pray for our church here in St. George's Freezy Water and worldwide, that they may go forward together in unity and strength. Help us to respect the beliefs of others, even if we do not share them, to celebrate what we have in common and to accept our differences. Guide us all in our ministry as we live each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for Queen Elizabeth, governments and world leaders, for leaders of industries and workers, for inventors and technicians, for entertainers and audiences, for those who set the targets at work in education and training and in the pews, for all who are powerful, that they may be guided by the spirit of truth, that your way may be known upon earth and your saving power among all nations. We continue to pray for an end to the war between Russia and Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you ascended as king of heaven and earth and that you are in control of all things. Help us to trust you when life is difficult and obey you at all times. We pray for the sick and troubled, for the fearful and alone, for those in pain at home, at work, in the streets and in the pews. We pray that all who suffer may feel the spirit healing presence. We especially pray for Michael Shine, Barbara Baker, Derek Rich, Russell Trotman, Malachi Reed Gray, Catherine and Richard Snelly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those kept fresh in our memory and for those long forgotten, for all who ever took the breath of life at home, at work, in the street, and in the pews. We pray for mercy and forgiveness for the dead and those who mourn them. May they find rest in the Spirit's embrace, and we recommend and we commend them to your keeping forever. We especially pray for recently departed Cathy Isaacs, and for those whose anniversary occurred this week, Robert Wallace, Thomas Wilson, Thomas Kerr, Leslie Treadgold, William Sewell, Albert Constable, Dorothy Maskell, Henry Bachelor, Norman Bowen, Frederick Atchison, James Sickle, David Flint, Sarah Smith, Dorothy Peacott, Edwin Harvey, Raymond Wright, and Grace Broomhild. Rest in turn, grant unto them, O Lord. And let life perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of heaven and earth, companion in life, spirit of truth, to you alone we turn our eyes and lift our hearts to your ascended Son. Help us as we go out into the world to keep your commandments and to love one another as you have loved us. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of, of your, your Son, son our, our Savior, Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, if you can, would you please stand to share the peace? Dear my brothers and sisters, God has made us one in Christ. 
He has set His seal upon us and has a pledge of what is to come and has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And let us offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, 
through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because after his most gracious, glorious resurrection, he appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us that where he is, whither we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. And so, Father, 
calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the Apostles, the Martyrs, Saint George, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And as our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Dear my friends, today I am going to distribute, give you the only one kind, and then at the end of the service, I will update you, um, you know, why we're doing that. And then if you have received um, your first communion, in the Catholic Church or um, you know, other um, you know, Christian denomination, you're most welcome to come up and then receive um, the Blessed Sacrament as usual. But if you'd like to receive just the blessing, just to come up in a normal way and just bow your head down in front of me so that I know um, what you prefer. I will bring the um, Blessed Sacrament down to the steps and for those who would like to um, you know, stay in your area um, but, um, don't, but still want to receive the communion, don't worry, I will bring the communion um, to you.
body of Christ. Amen. Amen.
Now let us pray. O oh God, our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and have fed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that nourished with such spiritual blessings, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, Sunday service. Um, and as I said, I spoke to a couple of people, uh, a smalling, who are new, which is lovely to see. Um, please stay for tea and coffee if you can. Um, we'd like to um, see you there. Thank you very much. Um, Father Taman, yes, as you know, he said he's been away, and I, I couldn't resist it. The, um, he was meant to come into Heathrow. Oh. But... <laughs> But he he come in. He was sent to Gatwick, um, so he he was on the uh, coming around the M25 in the rain. So I said, "I'll welcome home to the the good weather." It's always a tr trouble when you have a few teething problems, isn't it? Oh, sorry, I can't, I can't resist. Oh, that's it. Right, move on. You know my jokes. All right, please um, look at the uh, notices on the back of the sheet. But just a, a quick reminder there. Um, Yes, they, we have, we're trying to have a ju well, we will a jubilee tea party in the uh, vicarage garden on Saturday the fourth of June between twelve, 12 and two, and the details are there. Um, it's a busy time because the week after we've um, we have parade service, and afterwards will be our parish barbecue, yeah. and the date and details <laughs> are there. But at, on the table at the back of the church, there's a couple of things on there. One is, there's still some letters there for your uh, people, their stewardship return letters um, for the past tax year. So if you see someone's name or your own, um, if you can take it, it would be much appreciated. And next to it is a clipboard with a piece of paper and a pen. Um, basically, it's, if you're able to provide, I call it the extra food for the barbecue, you know, the salads, the coleslaw, um, the chicken, the um, fruit salad, things like that. So if you can, just put your name to it. Um, and even bring in a bottle of tomato sauce, those sort of things will be much appreciated. So if you can, just stick your name on the, uh, uh, the sheet. It'd be much appreciated. And then obviously the next details are there about the, the bowling evening, and there's the letter, um, well, info sheet about it. The contact is me, and it says, by this Friday, the 27th of May. That's my mobile, mobile number. And um, you can leave a message, text me any time. So uh, please do that. So uh, thank you very much. Yeah, brilliant. Um, I, I know it's, it's a bit weird for me to, to call it a Jubilee Tea Party, but um, on the Saturday, 4th of June, um, I know my back garden now, if you open my door and then, you know, the gate, and then if you see my garden, you will scream. But I promise that um, the garden will be presentable, so I'll do my best. So um, that's it. let's say in between 11.30, 12 o'clock, about 2 o'clock-ish, um, that, that is going to be um, you know, a lovely you know, the time for us. That is going to be um, kind of you know, a strawberry tea party. So if you suddenly realized after having a big early lunch on that Saturday, oh, I've got nothing to do. In that case, you know what to do. The Vicarage Garden at the back um, is, is open for anyone, so um, just feel free to pop in and to say hello to, um, you know, to friends. You may just bring your you know, family and the neighbors, that's absolutely fine. And then, but in order for us to do that, I will need some help. Um, um, if, I just, um, um, if I bake some cakes, um, and um, many of you will lose your teeth. So um, I don't want to take any risk. So if you are good at baking, please um, some, 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 give me some help, and I need your help. So 
please talk to me after the service if you can. And also, when you do a tea party, when you do a tea party, you don't want to serve the tea with mug, mortivica mug, or it's particular. So we don't want to do it. So possibly I would need some, um, you know, to help. Lovely teapots and then, you know, the cups. The good ones, so if I can borrow them at some point, I'll do my best to keep them safe. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um, do, do let me know so that we can make that tea party a wonderful occasion. And also, don't forget to pray for the good weather. You know, June, parish barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> we need a good weather. Um, as I briefly explained it earlier, um, the dream, you know, as a part of my sermon, from this Thursday, this Thursday is Ascension Day. From this Thursday until the next Sunday, which is Pentecost, that is a special um, period of prayer called Thy Kingdom Come. And then we are encouraged to pray for the mission of the church. That means, um, you know, find five people or the three, those who don't know Jesus yet, and then you keep them in your prayers. And then when we finish, next Saturday, Sunday, that's normally one kind. And from June, from June, that is the big change. And then we are encouraged to go back to the normal patterns. So from June, um, the communion will be fully reinstated. And then you're going to be able to come up to the altar rail. We're going to give you, um, you know, the chalice in the same way that we used to do, but... Some of you, many of you I know, including myself, you know, sometimes, and many of you will still feel, oh, Father Tim, I don't think I am, I, I am ready quite to receive, um, you know, from, directly from the cellist. Absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. And then theologically, receiving one kind, bread only, that contains the fullness of presence of God. So, it doesn't make you the inferior. If you decide not to take the wine, that's absolutely fine. You can do it. But if we do that up there, that means I give you a choice. Do you see what I mean? Rather than I make a decision and then I say, I'll give you only one kind. Yeah? So for those who'd like to receive the communion, as usual, that's absolutely fine. But we are not going to rush into you, so don't worry. If you don't want to receive, after receiving the bread from me, and then you just stand and then just go as usual, all right? So that is going to be um, what we're going to do from the first Sunday in June. For those who have a little bit, a bit of difficulties coming up, don't worry, I will come down um, to you as usual um, with bread. And also, um, the chalice will follow me. So if you want to receive um, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the precious blood from the chalice, you can. But if you don't want to uh, receive it, you say, so simply say no. That's absolutely fine. Okay? That is a big thing. So please keep this all changed. And then everyone who are involved in your prayer. It is hard for us to go back to um, the, you know, the pre, um, you know, um, the post, pre-pandemic um, you know, the time, but we are going to do our best to bring the sense of worship together. Right? I would love to um, ask you to pray for me and for all of us. Apart from that, I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Now, would you please stand for the final blessing? Then we're going to sing the final hymn. The Lord be with you. May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory and the blessing of God, the Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Now, dear friends, mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Now, we're going to sing our final hymn, hymn number 432.
rejoice, the Lord is King, your Lord is King, adore. Mortals give thanks and sing, and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice. Rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Jesus, the Savior, reigns, the God of truth and love. When he had pushed our stains, he took his seat above. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice. Rejoice again, I say, rejoice. His kingdom cannot fail, he rules earth and heaven. The keys of death and hell are to our Jesus King, lift up your hearts, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. He sits at God's right hand till all his foes are meet. And bow to his command and fall beneath his feet. Lift up your hearts, lift up your voice. Rejoice again, I say. 